I am the Administrative Law Judge Eddie Lam, and I would like to thank you for participating in our small case program today. Uh, we are currently off the record. Uh, we just needed to cover some housekeeping items before we move on. Um, thereafter, we will get back on the record and the parties will have the opportunities to present their arguments and testimonies. Uh, if any time you are confused, please um, ask me any questions. Also present is our stenographer, Ms. Alonzo, who is reporting this hearing verbatim. To ensure we have an accurate record, we ask, the, uh, we ask each party to speak one at a time and do not speak over each other. Also, please, please speak clearly and loudly. When needed, Ms. Alonso will stop the hearing process and ask for clarifications. After the hearing, Ms. Alonso will produce the official hearing transcript, which will be available on the Office of Tax Appeals' website. The hearing transcript and the video recording are part of the public record. Um, as you know, today's hearing is being conducted in Cerritos, California. There are a couple of general rules that I would ask um, everyone to keep in mind for this hearing. Um, please mute your microphone if you're not speaking to avoid any feedback noises. Um, there's like um, a little push button um, in front of the microphone and um, there will be a green light lit up that's indicating that's on and off. Um, this process, again, is being broadcast live and any, inf in any information um, spoken at today's hearing is publicly viewable. Um, as a reminder, the Office of Tax Appeal is not a court. Uh, we are in an independent appeals body. The Office of Tax Appeal is staffed uh, by tax experts and independent of the state's tax agencies. Are there any questions uh, before um, I start? Um, I'll start off with uh, appellant. Any questions so far? No. Thank you. Uh, CDTFA? No questions. Yeah. Thank you. Let me check uh, with um, our sonographer to, uh, to see if there's any concerns. OK. Well, thank you. Uh, we are opening the record in the appeal of Bake R Us. This, sorry, let me speak a little louder. We're opening up the record um, uh, in the appeal of Bake R Us. This matter is being held before the Office of Tax Appeals. The OTA case number is 2205103324. Today's date is Wednesday, October 12, 2022, and the time is approximately 9.30 a.m. Appellant have uh, elected to uh, have this appeal determined pursuant to the procedures of the small case program. Uh, those procedures require the assignment of a single administrative law judge. And again, my name is Eddie Lam, and I will be the administrative law judge for the purposes of this appeal. Um, now, for introductions, can we have um, appellant start introducing yourself onto the record? My name is David Aframian. Thank you. Ms. Alonzo, um, can we? My name is David Aframian. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Aframian. Um, can we have respondents start um, introducing themselves onto the record? Good morning, Mari Guzman, legal counsel for the department. Thank you. Chad Backus with the legal division. And Jason Parker, chief of headquarters operations bureau. Thank you so much. Um, as discussed and agreed upon by the parties at the pre-hearing conference on September 23rd, 2022, and noted in my minutes and orders, the issue in this matter are as follows. Uh, number one, whether appellant has established reasonable cause for the relief of the failure to file penalty. And number two, whether appellant is entitled to relief of any of the accrued interest. Are there any objections to this issue, appellant? No, Judge. Thank you. Um, uh, respondent? No objections. Thank you. Um, appellant has identified Exhibit 1. Uh, and has no other exhibits to offer as evidence. Uh, is that correct? That's Appellant? correct. Thank you. And uh, respondent, do you have any objections? No objections. Thank you. Um, and respondent has identified exhibits A through G, uh, which um, the Office of Tax Appeals had uh, attached the exhibits and emailed it to you, uh, Mr. Afranian. Um, and there's no other um, exhibits um, to be offered as evidence. Is that correct, respondent? Thank you. Um, does appellant have any objections to exhibits A through G? No, I don't. Okay, thank you. Uh, no objections were raised and these exhibits um, will be omitted into the record. And 
Okay, uh, and then, um, Mr. Framian, um, you have indicated at the pre-hearing conference that you would testify as a witness at this oral hearing. Uh, I just wanted to reiterate from what I've uh, discussed at the pre-hearing conference, which is once you are sworn in as a witness, uh, the witness will be open to cross-examination by CDTFA, and since CDTFA um, is not calling any other witnesses or any witnesses, uh, there will not be a chance for you to cross-examine CDTFA. Um, but on the other hand, you will be offered a final rebuttal uh, uh, at the close of this hearing. Um, so I just wanted to double check with you. Do you still want to testify as a witness? Yes, I have no objections. Okay. Um, okay, well, Mr. Framey, we'll swear you in for this testimony. Um, Ms. Ms. Alonso, um, can you hear? Here, okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Framey, can you speak into the mic? Because like, I can't really hear. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, and then, uh, Mr. Framey, um, we'll, we'll swear, in, in, swear you in. Um, would you raise your right hand for me? Um, Mr. Framian, would you, um, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Okay, thank you, Mr. Framian. Okay, well, um, this oral hearing will begin, and uh, Mr. Framian, can you begin your presentation for about 20 minutes, uh, which includes your witness testimony? As a reminder, uh, Mr. Framian, you will be offered a final statement after CDTFA's um, presentation for about five minutes. Okay, thank okay, you. Thank you. You can begin now. Uh, so, Your Honor, my name is David Aframian. Uh, I'm Vice President of Baker Us, and uh, I met with Tonelli representatives early 2012 at our office and purchased a mixer equipment. During our meetings, I specifically requested Tonelli to be in charge of creating, shipping, customs clearance, payment of all the fees and taxes at the U.S. Customs, installation and commissioning of the equipment. I requested all of these expenses to be added to the base price of the equipment. In August 30, 2018, I received a statement of liability, which is in Exhibit B, for tax, interest, and penalty for the equipment which Tonelli imported in 2012. I immediately replied with a letter which was uh, in Exhibit 1 dated September 9, 2018, requesting custom documents and also contacted Tonelli. Uh, the state provided the contact information of the broker who was hired by Tonelli in charge of customs clearance. The broker said that they do not keep any records after two years. And I was looking for the uh, paperwork which was filed with the U.S. Customs. The only document which state provided was a one-page report that the importer name is Tonelli Group and the eight date of entry was July 20th, 2012 for $195,000 value according to Exhibit G. I immediately called the CDTFA office and spoke with Mr. Ricky Irving in September 2018 and emphasized that Tonelli imported this equipment and I questioned the value of the $995,000. Mr. Irving recommended to file a petition for further review to determine how much tax, if any, is due in order to avoid additional interest accrual. Once I found out that Tanelli had not paid the tax as a responsible company, I paid $13,125 based on an estimate value of $150,000. And this value of $150,000 was basically when I contacted Tanelli at the time they didn't have the documents from the sale of the equipment, but they said this is the value approximately what it is. Uh, following the appeals hearing conference uh, in April 22, 2021, the appeals bureau recommended to reduce the measure of tax from the $195,000 to $171,260 based on the documents which we provided. The Appeals Bureau indicated to us by emails, which you see dated May 24th and 28th, 
in 2021, according to Exhibit D, that once we pay the balance of the tax due in the amount of $1,860, then they will provide some relief of the interest and penalty. These emails were from Mr. Casey Lewallen and Mrs. Stephanie Fuller. Our representative, Mr. Swanson, in June of 12, 2021, according to Exhibit E, confirmed that we will proceed to pay the newly agreed upon remainder of the 1860 in reliance upon a reduction, if not total removal of penalties and interest. Your Honor, throughout this process, we have acted faithfully and honestly. Upon purchase of the equipment in 212, we asked Tonelli to cover all the costs to be included. Once we found out in 2018 that the tax on the equipment was not paid, we went ahead and paid 13125 and paid the additional $1,860 in January 25, 2022, with the mutual understanding that the interest and the penalty will be reduced. Uh, I'd like to touch uh, on a few statements which the CDTFA Appeals Bureau decision, which is dated 23rd, 2021, in Exhibit A. Uh, first, the Bureau indicated that petitioner imported from Italy into California and declared value of $195,000. The fact is, Bekaras did not import this equipment, and Bekaras did not declare a value of $195,000. We don't know how and who came up with this value. Second, the Bureau indicated petitioner failed to respond uh, on October 3, 2018. Uh, as you can see from Exhibit 1, I responded with a letter dated September 9, 2018 and also spoke, uh, called and spoke with the CDTFA representative, Mr. Ricky Irving, in September 2018. I wanted to make sure this matter was managed and taken care of properly. I responded and followed up uh, once we received the first notification in August 2018. Uh, the third point is the Bureau argues that the knowledge of the law is presumed and cannot be the basis for relief of interest and penalties. This is not the basis of our argument. We have always been aware of sales tax and are aware of our responsibility to pay sales tax on purchase of equipment. We have purchased other equipment and we've paid tax on it. Our position has always been that we purchase a turnkey equipment and the price includes the costs and expenses. Therefore, we request relief of penalties and interest. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Franian. Um, CDTFA, do you want to uh, begin your cross-examination? Yes, thank you. Thank you. No, we would not like to cross-examine at this time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, well, uh, respondent, um, CDTFA, um, would you like to begin um, your presentation? Yes, thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Good morning. There are two issues before the Office of Tax Appeals today. The first is whether appellant has established reasonable cause for relief of the failure to file penalty. And the second is whether appellant is entitled to relief of any accrued interest. Both issues stem from appellant's failure to file a return and timely pay the use tax due on its storage, use, or other consumption in California of imported tangible personal property from, Il from Italy for the liability period of January 1, 2012 through December 31, 2012. Appellant, Bake RS Inc. is a California corporation doing business as Dave's Baking Company which manufactures food and confectionery products. Based on information received from the United States Department of Homeland Security, Customs, and Border Protection, Exhibit G, CDTFA found that on July 20, 2012, 
appellant imported tangible personal property, specifically machinery, from Italy with a total declared value of $195,000. Appellant did not file sales and use tax returns for the liability period. On August 30th, 2018, the department issued to appellant a statement of proposed liability, Exhibit B, requesting that appellant either pay the use tax due on its storage, use, or other consumption in California of the imported machinery or provide proof that it did not owe the tax. On October 3rd, 2018, the department issued to appellant a notice of determination, Exhibit C, for the liability period for approximately $17,000 in tax plus accrued interests and a failure to file a penalty of approximately $1,700. The notice of determination was timely issued within the applicable eight-year statute of limitations under Revenue and Taxation Code 6487 which applies when a taxpayer does not file use tax returns for the liability period, which is the case here. On October 20th, 2018, appellant filed a timely petition for redetermination, disputing the declared value of the imported machinery, arguing that it purchased the machinery for $150,000 and that the remaining $45,000 of the reported purchase price consisted of charges for shipping and handling, as well as installation charges from the manufacturer. On January 5, 2019, appellant remitted a payment of approximately $13,000 based on its own estimation of the taxable purchase price of the imported machinery. Following the appeals conference, Appellant provided additional documentation in support of its argument, including shipping and installation estimates. By request signed under penalty of perjury dated May 10, 2021, Appellant filed a request for relief of the failure to file penalty and all accrued interest in this manner. matter. Excuse me. By email dated May 24, 2021, Exhibit D, the department recommended reducing the measure of tax from $195,000 to approximately $171,000 based on the additional documentation provided by appellant, which correspondingly reduced the tax liability to approximately $15,000 and the failure to file penalty to $1,500. By email dated June 12, 2021, Exhibit E. Appellant stated that it agreed with the department's reduction of the measure of tax, but continued to request penalty and interest relief. On February 24, 2022, Appellant remitted a payment of approximately $1,800, which paid off the remaining tax liability. However, a balance remains of approximately $7,300, $1,500 for the failure to file penalty, and $5,800 in accrued interest. We first turn to the issue of whether appellant has established reasonable cause for relief of the failure to file penalty. If any person fails to file a timely return, the department is required to impose a penalty equal to 10% of the amount of tax due. Failure to file penalties may be relieved if a person's failure to file a timely return was due to reasonable cause and circumstances beyond the person's control and occurred notwithstanding the exercise of ordinary care and in the absence of willful neglect. Moreover, a person seeking relief must submit a statement signed under penalty of perjury setting forth the facts on which the request for relief is based. Here. Appellant submitted a statement requesting relief, contend contending that it did not have prior knowledge or experience with importing goods from abroad and that the manufacturer was responsible for transporting the machinery from Italy to Appellant's facility, 
such that appellant was unaware that it was required to pay tax on its purchase and use of the machinery. Appellant also contends that after it received notification in 2018 from the department regarding the use tax due, appellant remitted a payment of approximately $13,000 based on its own estimation of the taxable purchase price of the imported machinery. Lastly, appellant also requests relief of the penalty because it imposes a financial burden on its business. Here, there is no dispute that appellant did not file a return for the liability period or otherwise report its purchase and use of the imported machinery at issue. As for appellant's contention that it was unaware of the requirement to pay tax on its purchase and use of the imported machinery, knowledge of the law is presumed. Therefore, appellant's lack of understanding and awareness of its use tax responsibility on its purchase and import into California of the machinery does not constitute reasonable cause and circumstances beyond its control that prevented the timely filing of returns. Moreover, with respects to appellant's contention that it made a payment towards its tax liability after receiving the notice of, det of determination, this provides no legal basis for relieving the failure to file penalty either. Lastly, regarding appellant's request for relief based on financial hardship, the Office of Tax Appeals, as an administrative agency, does not have any authority to grant equitable relief and is instead bound by statute. As a general matter, equitable powers can only be exercised by, by a court of general jurisdiction. Therefore, the Office of Tax Appeals may not consider the equitable relief requested by appellate. Appellant has not set forth any facts explaining why or how its failure to file a return to report the purchase of the imported machinery at issue was due to reasonable cause and circumstances beyond its control. Therefore, we find no basis upon which to relieve the failure to file penalty. We now turn to the issue of whether appellant is entitled to relief of any accrued interest. The imposition of interest is mandatory and may be relieved only under very limited circumstances, such as when the failure to pay tax was due to a disaster or an unreasonable error or delay by a department employee. In its request for relief of the accrued interest, Appellant set forth the same contentions as discussed with respect to its request for relief of the failure to file penalty, asserting that it did not have knowledge of its use tax liability on its imp import and purchase of the machinery, that it made payment of approximately $13,000 after receiving notification of its outstanding tax liability and that the accrued interest imposes a financial hardship on its business. However, none of these circumstances fall within the scope of reasons for which relief of interest may be granted, and we are not aware of any facts that would warrant the granting of such relief in this case. Moreover, with respect to appellant's request for relief based on financial hardship, we would like to reiterate that the Office of Tax Appeals does not have any authority to grant equitable relief. Therefore, we find no basis upon which to grant relief of the accrued interest. Based on all of the evidence provided, appellant has not established reasonable cause for relief of the failure to file penalty, nor has appellant established that it is entitled to relief of the accrued interest. Therefore, the appeal should be denied. Thank you. Thank you for that presentation. Um, I have a few questions um, for Mr. Framian. Yes. Uh, Mr. Framian, it seems like you've um, indicated that um, during the process of negotiation of the, um, the tax base, um, that is it, is, are you trying to argue that um, during that, during that phrase of uh, reducing the tax 
the tax liability that um, you were it was presented to you that the failure to file penalty and interest was going to be reduced? Yes. Okay. In, Can you explain in, more? In the emails that you have in the attached uh, exhibit, uh, let's see here, 2000, let's see. Exhibit, uh, let's see here. Are you referring to Exhibit E? Uh, uh, exhibit D. Uh, on the uh, page two, uh, at the in the last uh, in the last uh, paragraph, it says in regards to the CDTFA's. A735 relief from penalty and interest. We request that it be handled by the applicable department. And then further down, once that is paid, uh, that that uh, remaining balance is paid, uh, the suggestion that a partial interest relief may be warranted and will be addressed. Uh, so this itself, to me, it means that they agree to have some partial relief of the interest. Okay, um, thank you, Mr. Afranian. Um, and then um, I noticed that um, you said that, uh, is it Tonelli? Tonelli, that's Tonelli. correct. Tonelli is like, um, you've indicated that Tonelli is uh, where you bought the equipment and shipped and they would take care of the expenses. Um, are, were you, are there any evidence that you wrote that that when you bought the um, um, the equipment that Tonelli will be remitting taxes? I, I actually asked them that question, and they said no. This is not uh, the portion that we'll pay. We'll cover all the costs. That's the only cost which we don't pay. And uh, this was back in 2018 when I received a notification. We purposely did not want to be involved in the entry of the product at the customs. We didn't want to be there. We have never imported an equipment. So we wanted them to hire somebody who would import the equipment and manage all the costs, including the taxes. But when they later told us that they did not include that, then that's why in 2018, I went ahead and paid that $13,000 based on the value of the equipment. And again, we have no idea how that $195,000 came about being a value. I mean, where did they get that from? Nobody knows. Because it wasn't us who imported the equipment. And they keep repeatedly saying that Baycaras imported the equipment. No, we didn't import the equipment. We purchased the equipment here in California. And as a result, like all the other equipments that we purchase, we get an invoice and we pay it, and we don't, don't get questioned later about the taxes because everything is included. Of course, that's a lesson to be learned that from now on, I need to make sure that there is some sort of documentation from whoever we purchase an equipment. They have a line item that indicates this is the cost of the sales tax. We don't have anything that separates the cost of the equipment we purchased from Tonelli that says this is the cost uh, for shipping, this is the cost for handling, this is the cost for crating. We had two of their technicians who flew over from Italy and they stayed for two days. And they, of course, charged us thousands of dollars. And they did not give us a breakdown of those charges where until after this whole issue evolved about the fact that they had not paid the tax. And then we 
found out and we said, yeah, we, are, we know there is a tax to be paid. So here, uh, let's sit down and find out what is the actual value of the equipment. Because obviously you don't have any information to support the $195,000. Where did you get that from? Nobody has an answer. So how, how can you pay a tax on something that not, does not have a correct value? When I go to a supermarket, I purchase a product, how much tax am I supposed to pay if there is no price on that equipment? Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Framian. Um, but eventually you did agree on to I agreed. a price. That's correct. Okay. Um, now I, have one, I want to turn over to um, CDTFA. Um, when I read the email that um, in Exhibit D um, that Mr. Framian had uh, just referred to, it said that once um, the tax is paid, a uh, relief can be considered. Um, that that's uh, a, a a process for is that a process for CDTFA to um, for taxes to be paid and then consider whether or not uh, interest and penalties would be abated. Generally speaking, the tax needs to be paid um, because of the, either way it's a failure to file penalty or a failure to pay penalty. So if they haven't, if they still haven't paid the returns past due, a failure to pay penalty would apply. So we wouldn't consider relief until the amount is paid for the failure to file penalty. Okay, thank you. Your Honor. Oh, yes, Mr. Freeman. Uh, I think the question that was addressed by you was not answered. That question was deviated. The question here is the state said it's warranted. Yep, I, I can see that um, UTC, UTCP suggests as partial interest may be warranted. Okay. Um, CDTFA, do you have any response to that? The email states that relief may be warranted. That does not guarantee that relief will be warranted. And I think um, the department would continue to argue that the failure to file penalty it was not filed due to reasonable cause or circumstances beyond um, appellant's control. So, and also with respect to interest relief, and interest is, is mandatory, and there are specific circumstances under which relief can be warranted, and here there was no disaster, or excuse me, no facts presented that there was a disaster or error or delay on behalf of the department. So um, there, is, there is nothing warranting the type of relief requested here by appellate. Thank you. And um, Mr. Framian, I have one final question. Um, did, Ms., uh, did Tonelli ever represent it to you that they would be remitting sales tax? Uh, n not after we inquired. Once I contacted them uh, in 2018, they said no, they had not paid the tax, and they said this was not our responsibility. And then I said, why didn't you uh, disclose it to me once you imported the equipment? Uh, they basically, they don't care and uh, they are in Italy. So I, I, uh, I, as a consequence, have to suffer. Thank you, Mr. Framian. I do understand that. Um, okay, I think that's all my questions. Um, Mr. Framian, do you have uh, five minutes for your final remarks? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Thank um, you. Uh, as I had mentioned, uh, you know, we've been in this business for over 25 years. 
And from our experience, when we purchase an equipment, we ask that the uh, price be given to us for the delivery, installation, and all the taxes to be included. We don't uh, tell the manufacturer that let us pay the tax separately. We want everything to be included. Uh, we did not willfully avoid payment. We did not neglect payment. It's not as if we have no knowledge of tax payments on equipment purchases. So the argument from the state is not warranted that we should be knowledgeable about it. Uh, we are fully aware of our responsibility to pay the tax. And this was exemplified by the fact that we paid the $13,125 in 2019 once we found out that the taxes were not paid at the time of import, not by us, but by Tonelli. Tonelli is the company that imported the equipment. So I want to make sure that's clarified in the decision that was made and repeatedly being mentioned today that we imported the equipment. That has to be really a very important point. Uh, so I kindly urge the court to evaluate the position and provide us relief of the penalty and determine if perhaps the interest can be reduced not because of relief of interest but because of the timing and I suggest that to be interest calculated from the period September 1st, 2018 which was when it was established that uh, the tax was not paid until we paid the tax in January of 2019. I appreciate your time and thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Framian. We're going to go ahead and waive our closing remarks. Thank you. Thank you, respondent. Um, give me a second here. Before I close the record, um, does either party have any questions before we conclude the hearing? No, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Well, we're ready to conclude this hearing. This case is submitted on October tw uh, 12, 2022. The record is now closed. Thank you, everyone, for coming in today, and we will send you a written opinion of the decision within 100 days. Today's um, hearing in the appeal of Baker is, is now adjourned. The next hearing will begin in the next uh, 15 minutes. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.